Good evening, good evening, good evening. Greetings and welcome to the second annual Celebrating Women, Breaking Barriers and Public Service, Honoring Groundbreaking Women in Union County. Let's give it a round of applause. My name is Shakira Johnson and I am the founder and Chief Impact Officer for JPR and Events. We are an award-winning social impact firm. So it warms my heart to have been invited here this evening to host such an impactful night. Tonight we're gonna have the opportunity to hear from Union County's great leaders as well as honor some of our shining stars who are doing great work every day in the community. Before we get started, a little bit about the Lesniak Institute. The Lesniak Institute is developing the next generation of American leaders by teaching the principles of effective advocacy, offering firsthand experience through its causes, and partnering with grassroots organizations. As you look around the room, I'm sure you see many many individuals from the Lesniak Institute who are here. If you are around, just raise your hand, everyone who is with the Institute. If you have any questions or want to learn, they're, they're working. <laughs> they're working. If you have any questions about the Institute, please feel free to ask them. We are going to get started with some introductory remarks. And first, I would like to call up um, Senator Lesniak. Thank you. I look like a shrinking violet compared to that stunning look that you just saw. Good evening, everyone. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. Tonight, we honor women who broke barriers in public service. I want to say a few words about a woman who broke barriers to get me elected to the New Jersey General Assembly. Her name was Catherine Green, although everyone called her Ma Green. To advance in politics, you need to have a godfather. Well, I had a godmother. Ma Green was the first female power broker in New Jersey. For those who know New Jersey politics, who knows New Jersey politics here? Anyone? You guys know? Well, Ma Green was the George Norcross of her day. Anybody know George Norcross? He's the big boss from South Jersey, right? <laughs> that was Ma Green, and this was way back when, at the beginning of politics. Without her backing, I never would have been elected to the legislature and probably would still be playing accordion at Polish dances and weddings. <laughs> I want to say a few words about one of tonight's honorees, Chessie Roberts. Chessie can't be here today. She's not tonight. She's not feeling that well, but she cringes. By the way, we're going to have to send this video to Chessie, make sure she sees it, because she cringes when I tell this story. But I'm going to tell it anyway. Chessie was a civil rights trailblazer, being the first African-American woman to teach business in the Elizabeth Public School System. In addition to being my typing teacher, Chessie was also my homeroom teacher. And here's the part Chessie doesn't like to hear. Chessie uh, was the secretary for the Elizabeth branch of the NAACP. And they had bi-weekly meetings. And in those days, they sent out no more, no emails. They sent out postcards. And she would ask for a, a volunteer during homeroom to write out the postcards. And I always volunteered. You know, you're not supposed to do that. The students are supposed to be studying during. <laughs> but it was a great experience for me. You know, I learned from her the importance of the beginning of the civil rights. That's how old I am. <laughs> The, the beginning of the civil rights movement here in America. And I owe all of that to Chessie and her determination. Give her a great hand for that. Chessie, they're all clapping for you. 
So the Catherine Carter, where's Catherine? Is she here? <laughs> Catherine. Hey. Oh. Romina Cannon, where's Romina? Not here yet. Sheena Spence. <laughs> Sheena. I know Georgia Jones is here. I saw her. Where's Georgia? There she is. And I know Elizabeth Ragone is here. Where's Elizabeth? There she is, right over there. You all and Chessie have paved the way for African American women in public service. And you're not an African American woman. <laughs> did I get the sorry, did I get the message wrong here? <laughs> huh? Oh, it's just about what it's just all of them happen to be African American except you. <laughs> I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised. Anyway, you've paved the way for women in public service and are an example for everyone to emulate. Congra congratulations and God bless you all. All right, another round of applause for the senator. I'm going to share a bit about our next sponsor, the NAACP Elizabeth Branch. The National Association for the Advancement of Colored People, NAACP, is the oldest civil rights organization in the United States. The NAACP was founded in 1909 to dismantle racism and accelerate change in key areas such as criminal justice, health care, education, climate, and the economy. Will all of the NAACP members, rather you are Elizabeth or from abroad, just raise your hand so we can acknowledge you. And now I would like to bring up the president of the branch, Mr. Sean McLean. Thank you, Sean. Good evening, everyone. About a month ago, I wouldn't be able to make it up the stairs, so thank God. All praise right. God. Right. I've been working out at LA Fitness. I don't know if y'all can notice, but <laughs> ooh, thank God for the pool. I would like to um, thank everyone for coming here this evening to honor these wonderful women on Women History Month. This is my second time that we're honoring women in Elizabeth and the Union County. And I get such great pleasure to honor these wonderful, wonderful women. When you think about wonderful women, everybody always think about their mom and all those grandmothers, all those and teachers, all those people that were served as role models. But for women, it's been very difficult um, while they climbed the ladder breaking barriers, being the first female uh, firefighter, being the first female lieutenant, and all the great things that some of these women here tonight have done and accomplished. Um, we also have some great speakers. Um, Patricia Perkins Augustus, first black councilwoman in the city of Elizabeth. <laughs> and we have a lot of firsts. And we also have a lot of people who do wonderful things for the community that nobody knows about. They just go and do the work. They don't stand in front of the camera. They don't take no pictures. They don't say, oh, please make sure my name is on the front cover, please. They don't do things like that. They're very humble, and they do it genuinely because it comes from their heart. So I would like to definitely thank Senator Lesniak's Institute for all the hard work that they've done. 
So you definitely want to give them a round of applause. Sarah, Brittany, Kev, and the whole crew. Uh, definitely Sarah. Definitely. Me and Sarah have been on the phone all the time tonight, just getting it done. We talked about the gray areas. <laughs> Where there's no right or wrong, got to do something that's great right in the middle and make it happen. And uh, most of all, I'd like to thank my executive committee for the Elizabeth Branch NAACP. If you, uh, one of my, all my executive members, can you put your hand up, please? We got Khalil Johnson, my first VP. <laughs> Danae Dunham. We have Lillian Gordine, our treasurer. Um, we have Monica Green, assistant secretary. And then we have a lot of great people in our branch. Detective Williams, is, he's, he, he fills in for me as the president, and he loves it. <laughs> Him and his wife, they love it. And all of the members of the NAACP, put your hands up if you're a member of the Elizabeth Branch NAACP. I thank you guys. I thank you guys very, very much. And also, I want to thank Kane University. Uh, Kelly, who cannot be here today, who's a guest speaker. Um, definitely prayers out to her and her family. Uh, but we have Dr. Sandra Gray, who's going to say a few words. She's from King University. So without all these partnerships, without all these people, without all this hard work, we wouldn't be able to put on a great, wonderful event like we are today. So with that being said, I thank everyone, and I hope you enjoy the program. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Another round of applause for Sean McLean. Thank you, Sean, for your friendship and for inviting me to host this event tonight. Moving on, do we have any Kane University graduates in the house? <laughs> Now, I know this is a safe space. I graduated from Rutgers, and I know there's a little rivalry happening right now. <laughs> but Kane and Rutgers are, are, are really friends. So I wanted to share a bit about Kane University, which is one of our sponsors this evening. about our sponsor, Kane Office of Government Affairs and Community Partnerships. The mission is to acknowledge, embrace, and advocate through established and newly created relationships and partnerships the goals and vision for the university to our students and to familiarize public policy leaders, government, and community leaders of the impactful global and engaged learning programs and experiences in a world-class, innovative, and inclusive environment throughout our regions. I personally have been so impressed with the innovations that Kane has been making through the years, from the curriculum to the world-class facilities to their dynamic leadership it is really an honor and a pleasure to be here and to have them as a sponsor. So without further ado, I would like to call Dr. Sancha Gray to the stage to bring remarks on behalf of Kane. Thank you. Thank you so much for such a lovely introduction. Good evening, everyone. And on behalf of our president, Dr. Lamont Repolette, welcome. As we come to the end of Women's History Month, I want to take a moment to celebrate the incredible women who have overcome barriers and broken through glass ceilings in public service and the field of education in our nation and in Union County, specifically Elizabeth, New Jersey. Throughout history, women have been trailblazers in education, fighting for the right to learn and teach. 
One example that comes to mind is Mary McLeod Bethune, who founded a school for black girls in Florida in 1904 and helped to establish the National Youth Administration under the Franklin, President Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Tonight, it gives me great pleasure to be a part of this event. Many thanks to Senator Lesniak and to President Sean McLean and their teams for taking the time to acknowledge the women right here in our own backyard who have made significant contributions to education and public service. Women's History Month provides an opportunity to recognize the important contributions that women have made throughout history and continue to make today. Our honorees have demonstrated such a resilient nature, overcoming obstacles and breaking down barriers to pave the way for future generations of women to follow in their footsteps, all despite facing discrimination and barriers based on their gender, race, and ethnicity. And so tonight, being to gather together in this space to honor these amazing women is such an honor and a privilege for us at Kane University to be sponsors uh, and co-sponsors in this event. I would be remiss if I didn't add a specific shout out to one of the honorees tonight who we haven't heard her name, but she's also a proud Kane alumna. And that would be Chessie Dentley Roberts, the first black business education teacher at her school. As a proud Kane alumna, I had to give the shout out. And uh, we do have a little friendly rivalry, but at the end of the day, we are all here to support and make sure that we are advancing outcomes for all people. So that in that way, as my sister over here said, there is no competition. We're all in this space together with a collective mindset and a collective energy around advancing outcomes for all people. Tonight, let us remember and celebrate these women who have blazed trails and broken down these barriers. Thank you again to the Lesniak Institute, to the Elizabeth branch of the NAACP, and to all of you that have come out to be a part of this wonderful event tonight. for Dr. Sancha, as well as Kane University. Next, I'd like to bring up Assemblywoman Annette Keanu. Assemblywoman Ke Annette Keanu has represented the 20th Legislative District since 2008 and is a member of the New Jersey Legislative Latino Caucus. Good evening. Um, I just got here from Trenton. We had a long day, 74 bills, and we had a lot of discussion on the floor. Um, so let me start with this. I don't know where the time person is, but I want to make sure that I'm respectful. Okay, you're going to show me something? Okay, great. All right, so let me be quick, okay, because i got to do a whole lifetime in, in five minutes. All right, so my current title is Majority Conference Leader, the first Latina to have that title. I'm a former chair of the Assembly Judiciary Committee, first time a Latina. You, you get, you, now you know a little... Um, former chair of the Assembly Homeland Security and State Preparedness, also the first time as a Latina, and a deputy majority leader, not the first time. There were others that trailblazed for me. Now, that all sounds so important, right? Now it does, right? But it's not that important, it's just titles. When I was a child, um, when you looked at me, what my permanent record in high school would say was granddaughter of a farm worker, child of divorce, from a broken home, even though my mother said our home was never broken. Um, mother's a hairdresser. No one in family had ever attended college. And you know, you go to that time where your high school counselor, and this, let me tell you, this did not happen in Union County. You go to your high school counselor and they ask you, what do you want to be when you grow up? So I said, an attorney. So that high school counselor said to me, you should not set your sights so high. You should be a hairdresser like your mother. And I'm like, why? I don't like playing with hair, not even my own, right? Don't like it. 
So, but what he saw was what was in my record. He pulled out the permanent record of another student, and, and she was uh, Caucasian. And I saw who it was, because, you know, I had a look. And um, her father was an attorney. I was like, okay. I'm not, he said, these are the people you will be competing with. I'm like, no. I'm going to compete with myself. Either I put the time in and the sacrifice, or I don't. And so I went home, I thought about it. My mother's like, he doesn't know us. I'm going to make a pact with you today. I will help support you as long as you do the research, as long as you do the work, because no one has ever gone to college in this family, and you'll be the first. So I did my research, got into college, got into law school, three minutes, OK. And um, back then, minorities passed about 60% in the New Jersey um, bar exam. And I was, what, I'm going to be in the 60 or the 40. My mother said, you know, the beautician, okay. She said, um, I will pay all your bills, but you, we, you're going to have to study for this test. And she had heard that John Kennedy Jr. had failed once, and the second time he had tutors. So she told me, look, we don't have Kennedy money. You don't have the luxury of passing it in two times. You're going to pass it the first time. Here's the money. Everybody got perms for the next three months, and that's how she paid my bills. Now, what can I say about Senator Lesniak? I can truly say he changed my life, hands down. So what happened? I was a law clerk, um, and I was invited to an event at his house. I didn't even know what a New Jersey senator was or what he was supposed to do or what he did. I knew nothing. I just knew I was going to a house of a very important person. Okay. So I met him. And um, I asked him questions like, what do you do? And, you know, all that. And I was so impressed with what he did. When I left his house, back then, remember newspapers? We all had newspapers, right? So there would be issues that would appear in the newspaper. And I would write a note of how I would suggest how to solve the issue, right? So he received it. And he's like, oh, I should hire this girl, right? She's doing some work. And so he called me up and offered me the job. And I said, no, thank you. And he was like, what? No, thank you. I'm like, no, no, thank you. You know, I went to law school, and they tell me the next step is a law clerk for a judge, and then I get a real job. And that's what I'm going to do. So the senator, if you know the senator, he does not take no for an answer, right? So he went back, and at the time, too, he was the state Democratic chairman, something else I really didn't know about. Um, and he called me back, and he offered me the job as chief of staff, and that he would appoint me to the New Jersey Congressional Redistricting Committee. I'm like, hmm, that sounds interesting. Let's talk about that, right? So he had told me that we should do research to make sure that a majority-minority district could be created, and that was back when we had 13 congressional districts. We don't have that anymore. And... Um, also, he created the Hispanic Advisory Board to the New Jersey Democratic Party. So that was the first time. And um, that got me into politics. And um, ah, my time's up. So <laughs> thank you very much. And so you got a snapshot. If you'd like to hear more of that riveting story, just catch the assembly one down on the floor. <laughs> so now it is time for us to begin the awards presentations. Hold on. 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 My bad. Sincere apologies. We have another speaker to bring remarks. We will now have Councilwoman at Large, Patricia Perkins. Augusti, but I was actually going to say this. Actually,
Councilwoman was one of the first people to hire me almost at this point 15 years ago. And as we're talking about honoring women, it's also something to be said for women who support women. And I had that in my mental notes to say, and I just wanted to thank her publicly for that. And Councilwoman, please come, the floor is yours, thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm a firm believer your works will speak for you. So, um, Shakira, let's give her a hand. Let's give her a hand. She's doing a wonderful job. And um, I thought about, you know, the NAACP. Is, you know, it's my heart and soul. Um, I got involved in politics a strange way. I was the NAACP president about 32 years ago. Yeah, 32 years ago. Only been in office for 31. And um, I was an investment officer. So picture this. Investment officer by day, NAACP president by night, you know, fighting for civil rights, advocating for people, you know, working with the community leaders like Kim Nesbitt Good here. Let's give Kim Nesbitt Good a hand. Thank you so much. You know, supporting people like Detective Dan Williamson, making sure that he become, there you go, he become a police officer. Just, just doing the business of, you know, just engaging the community, making sure our community is whole. And as I was driving back and forth from Elizabeth to Newark, working at First Fidelity Bank, investment officer, coming home, yielding, questions about NAACP stuff, hanging out with my friends from Boston University, Rutgers University, you know, I went to Boston University first. Um, I'm a recovering um, flunk failed out student, meaning that, what y'all laughing about? Meaning that uh, I had a full academic scholarship at Boston University, you know, top of the class, you know, some of my classmates here, 1980, who's in the house? Come on. <laughs> so. Um, <laughs> so it was, um, and I transferred to Rutgers University. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> so I transferred to Rutgers University, tried to, um, I finished up my um, education, but I had a longing for the community. My friends from Boston University said, you're going to go back and do something in your community? Ilk, what's that? <laughs> I said, I'm going to build up my community. This is how we used to talk on the Charles River, why we should be doing our homework. We were out, but be that as it may, um, the NAACP is so near and dear to me. Um, so this is the women who's receiving these awards tonight, like someone spoken. Some of them don't have titles. You know, some of them, we just call them Kathy, you know, or we just call them Georgia. They may not have an Esquire behind their name, but they do so much in the community to keep our community whole, to keep our community moving forward, to keep our community vibrant. I got into politics, it was by a fluke. It was some men in the back room, the senator probably was one of them, and said we need to run somebody to take out the current mayor, which was D-U-N-N. -N. So, th that, that's, that's how it happened. And they said, well, what about you? I said, what do you mean, what about me? I'm running the NAACP. You know, I'm living my single life. I'm at First Fidelity doing investments during the day. I don't have time to run. And then I gave my mother a phone call. I said, Ma, these people want me to run for council at large. What you think? She said, girl, what you into now? I said, Ma, I think I'm going to do it. You know how our mothers are. Okay. And that's how it happened um, 32 years ago. And I'm still here. And I don't even like politics. <laughs> I don't even like it. But I like serving people. I like having people solve their problems. You know, I like working with people. I like to make sure that people get a fair share. I like to make sure that people have opportunity. You know, so people call me. I don't sometimes even know who they are, who they are. I just 
You need help? Okay, fine. And some of people say, well, did you get their name? Do you know their family background? Do you know politically who they're aligned with? I said, no, they need help. You know, this is my city. This is how I've been raised. Um, family of six. We grew up on Reed Street. I'm next to the baby. So I, got a, I had a quorum already in my house. We behind the scenes. Somebody say behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. Often without seeking recognition to make a positive impact on their community. That's special right there. The award is typically presented to an individual who has demonstrated exceptional dedication, selflessness, and generosity in their service to the community. To be considered for the Unsung Hero Award, the nominees must have a history of supporting their community in various ways. This award is open to individuals of all ages and backgrounds who reside in Union County. It is a testament to the power of selflessness and community service and a reminder that small acts of kindness can have a profound impact of the lives of those around us. It is my honor to present the 2023 Unsung Hero Award to Elizabeth Ragoon from Emilio Bayway, Flores. Please he come here and do a photo op. You know, what many people may not know, and this may not be in her remarks, is that Bayway Florist is such a pillar in the community. They do so much to support others. Many times they are helping in the background and quietly, even supporting sometimes people who don't have the financial means to provide flowers to bury their loved ones. And they do it all with smile, care, and compassion. So it really is an honor to have them recognize this evening. We're gonna have her to come up so she can share some words. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just want to let you know, when I opened my flower shop 34 years ago, I had $11 in my checking account. $11. That was it. My sister will contest to that. $11, right? I was always worried that the business would survive. Well, here today, 34 years later, I'm still there. Still there. And hopefully it'll be there for some time to come. The success of my flower shop was the support from the wonderful, wonderful community and all the hard work my staff put in. I have been blessed to be able to give back to the community in many ways, behind the scenes, and never, never, never did, I, I can't even sp explain it. I never wanted any, any recognition, nothing. I just wanted to be able to open the door every day with my staff, my wonderful husband by my side. <laughs> every day, seven days a week, we go to work. And it's for the community also. They are, I have to tell you, I am on Bayway Avenue and I have the best, best uh, community around me. They come to me in the morning and say, 
Miss Liz, I'm going to the corner store. Can I get you a coffee? I mean, you don't find people like that anymore. So this is why we go to work every day. There's my staff, there's my husband, there's my relatives, and I love everybody. And I hope that everyone will continue to come to my flower shop for years to come. <laughs> you know, I really do. And God bless everybody, everybody, and thank you. And this isn't, this isn't the speech I wrote, this is the speech I wanted to tell you from my heart, okay? God bless you, thank you. Beautiful. The next series of awards that we will present are the Outstanding Public Service Award. The Outstanding Public Service Award is a prestigious recognition given to women who have demonstrated exceptional leadership and service in their public sector careers of Union County. This award celebrates women who have broken barriers and shattered glass ceilings to make significant contributions to their communities and society as a whole. Nominees for this award have made significant accomplishments in their public sector roles, advancing their careers while making a positive impact on the lives of those they serve. These women have gone above and beyond in their duties, demonstrating a commitment to public service and improving the lives of their fellow citizens. The Outstanding Public Service Award honors women who have overcome gender-based obstacles to succeed in their careers and inspire others to follow in their footsteps. It recognizes those who have demonstrated exemplary leadership and service in their communities and have made a significant impact in their respective fields. In honoring these women, we recognize their exceptional leadership, dedication, and service, and remind ourselves that gender should never be a barrier to success. Now, I live in Rawway. I don't know if there's any Rawway people here. Okay, Ra okay Rawway. Okay, Rawway. <laughs> but really, again, when I was first starting my business, Elizabeth really embraced me. I talked a bit about the councilwoman hiring me. My very first paid role, very first paid job, here in Elizabeth was with the Elizabeth Port Presbyterian Center. I have to tell this story. So at the time, the Elizabeth Port Presbyterian Center needed to raise money. And they, my name got mentioned to them. Actually, Rod Spearman, who is not here, got my name from Stan Neuron, and they brought me in for an interview. And they told them that someone said that we were they had to have a potluck dinner in the basement to raise money. So I know some of y'all don't know me. But for those who do, no, I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> we will not have a potluck dinner in a basement. We will have a proper gala. And so in order to accomplish this, we needed an A team to not only host this gala that had not been done before, but to actually do it and raise thousands of dollars. The head member of that A team was no one other than Katherine Carter. It was such an honor and a privilege to work with her, with her smarts, her brilliance, her beauty, and her down-home charm. And anytime you would mention her name, people would light up and talk about all that she's done. And Kathy still continues to be a, a supportive sister and a friend to me, and I'm honored to present you with this award. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you. Just go right here. As many people know, I am not a woman of many words. <laughs> but I do want to say that uh, I want to thank God for being here. Because COVID had me shook. <laughs> you know, I was worried daily, but I got here to this day. I want to thank the NAACP for nominating me. Uh, the Elizabeth Port Presbyterian Center has been in existence since 1965 under the direction of Rev the late Reverend Joseph Garlick, who passed the baton to Rod Spearman, uh, Mr. Tid, a dedicated board member, and uh, a lot of other people have come along to help us stay alive. I'm a little nervous, <laughs> but um, I, I didn't know people thought that much of me. <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah. I've been at the center for this year will be 45 years. So, and just to know that the center is there, we still need support, but we're still alive. And I want to say, can my village stand up? Because they're here for me 24 7, seven days, a week, 365 days of the year whenever I need them. And I thank them for being here to honor me tonight. Thank you. The next recipient of the Outstanding Public Service Award is Georgia Jones Orr Esquire. Attorney at law and former municipal court judge. Good evening, everyone. Thanks to the NAACP for selecting me as an honoree and the Lesniak Institute and Keene University for hosting this event. There is an African pro proverb which partially states, when you educate a girl, you educate a nation. It is so important to celebrate. It is so important to celebrate women as we balance taking care of our families and working to address the needs of our communities. Education is not just about learning at an institution, but it's also about what you learn through your life's journey. 
as we gather here at Keene University, it's important that we make sure that we lift that as we climb and we make sure that we properly educate our children to prepare them to compete in this global economy. Having grown up on East Grand Street and Third Street in Elizabeth, I would like to dedicate this award to my mom, Betty Lou Jones, who's here. She is the wings, wings ben, she is the wind beneath my wings, who as a single teenage mother of three, myself and my two brothers, Daryl and Michael, she sacrificed so much to make sure that I went to college and law school, which allowed me to become an attorney and the first African-American female municipal court judge for the borough of Roselle. <laughs> and it allowed me to give back to my community through organizations like my sorority, Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, the Association of Black Women Lawyers, and the Women's Scholarship Club. Then she went on, she then went on to night school to get her high school diploma. I would like to thank those individuals who make up my village. Can you please stand? You all met my husband, Ron Orr, who's here. <laughs> and my daughter, Crystal Orr, who's here. And I just want to thank all my, my brothers, aunts, cousins, sister-in-laws, nieces, nephews, neighbors, high school classmates, sorority sisters, and I just thank you for supporting me and for your love and support. And congratulations to all of the other honorees, and God bless everyone. Our next award is going to be presented to Romina Cannon from the Elizabeth Police Department. Romina was not able to make it this evening, so Monica Green will be accepting her award. Monica. Our next award will be presented to Chessie Denty Roberts, educator and civil rights trailblazer. <laughs> the senator spoke kind words of her earlier. Unfortunately, she's unable to be here with us tonight, but her award will be accepted by Adrian Roberts Bird. They're asking me if I'm going to say some remarks. I wouldn't be Chessie's daughter if I didn't have some remarks. <laughs> As a proud Kane graduate, I am absolutely tickled pink to be here to accept this award for my mother, who at this time would just be totally ecstatic to be among the women that are being honored tonight. Ladies, you are amazing, and in Chessie's words, you're marvelous. Absolutely marvelous. 
Um, I'm sure there's many people in this room who have Chessie stories. I'm sure if you know the name Chessie Dentley Roberts, you know her, so I don't have to go there. And also, Senator Lesniak did a beautiful job of acknowledging her. Um, Senator Lesniak, I don't take this as coincidence that you may be giving my mother the last award that she may receive at um, 96 years old. She led you to civil rights, and it, it's just no coincidence. So I graciously accept this award. Anyone who is in public service, um, you're a servant. And if you are a servant, that means you're at the top of the line. You're not at the bottom, you're at the top. You serve people with passion, with love, and um, you get the job done. For those of you, uh, my family, they're calling on their villages. The village of Chessie Roberts, please stand up. There are many that know her and love her. Please stand as well if you like. And um, I just want to say I appreciate you. My mother is gracious and kind and grateful, uh, so deserving of this award with all these other women. We love you, God bless you, and keep serving. And for our final award presentation of the evening, I am honored to present the award to Sheena Spence, educator and civil rights trailblazer. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I would just run off, but I know Pat gonna catch me and point me back up this way. <laughs> but I like to say thank you, first of all, God, um, and my family, my support system. I could literally say the village because I think there's somebody that's connected to me at every table in this room. <laughs> and. Um, I did not have it in my plans to become a firefighter. I'll just say that. Uh, that was nothing but God and God only. Uh, I was content with being a surgical tech for 15 years, and my father is on the job. He's currently working today. He is in his 38th year complete. Um, <laughs> I just happened, I'm, I'm a daddy's girl, and it was a, a very hot day, and I was like, I'm gonna take my dad some ice cream. And I happened to go there, and I'm watching his crew, and I'm like, these men can't take my daddy out. <laughs> and I kept saying, if they could do it, I could do it. And then I whispered to him, I was like, Daddy, you think I could do that? And he, if y'all know my father, y'all know he a man of very little words. And without stopping, he turned around and said, yeah, stupid, and kept going. <laughs> that was as good as it got. And um, when the test came around, he sent me the information for the test. And I was like, I don't know. I don't know. Well, you know what? If God want me to do it, he'll have me do it. I filled out the test. In, in the state of New Jersey, you uh, have to be between ages of 18 and 35. When I filled out for that test, I was already 31. I did not hear anything for three years. By the time I did hear something, I was already 34. So I got in, and I had no room for error. Um, and here I am today. Wow. 
my current standings, um, as you read in the book, I am the only African American on the captain's list currently. The only female also on that list. So with God's grace, maybe in the future, y'all see me again with another accolade on my shoulder. And um, I'm going to keep pushing as long as I can keep pushing. I got three beautiful kids here, and uh, they're my reason. Thank you. All right, let's have a huge round of applause for all of our honorees. So inspiring, so beautiful, so much impact. I invite everyone to please make sure that you take time to read their bios, which are in the journal, so that you can learn more about all of these extraordinary women. It is now time for us to enjoy our wonderfully catered meal in the company of our fellow public servants. Now, the buffet is self-served. I am going to call tables. Um, until your table is called, please um, remain at your seat, enjoy the journal. And then about midway, once everybody is served, we're going to come back up and we're going to bring remarks and talk about an exciting, the Juneteenth parade and all of the wonderful components that are attached to that. So everyone enjoy dinner. We'll circle back in about 30 minutes. And first tables here, if we could have table one, two, and three. Thank you. Table one, two, and three here. <laughs>